Welcome y'all to uh, Married at First Sight season 15, episode 11, and this is for the after party, y'all. And on this after party, it was all the men. It was Mitch, it was Nate, and it was uh, Justin. You know, Justin gonna show up for all the after party. He ain't missing the after party. I think he might have been on the after parties more than anyone, it seems. So the drink of the night was a dig up dirty martini, which was like some olive juice, some vodka, I guess because they digging up the past and really um, uncovering a bunch of stuff. That's why they called it the dig up uh, dirty martini, uh, because all the dirt was pulled up on people's past. And this was like a full on therapy session, y'all. And so uh, Keisha and I pull in, which is asking um, Mitch, you know, how did he think about showing his vulnerable side? We saw Mitch crying. I don't know about you. I was crying alone with Mitch. I was really uh, enjoying seeing Mitch really go deep and uncover some stuff that seems like it has been hindering him for years, y'all. And so um, I think that it was very cathartic for him. I think that regardless of what happens with him and um, Kristen, I hope they make it. But I think Mitch is going to be a changed person because a lot of the stuff that Mitch talked about on this episode was also watching himself back on the film. And what he's saying is he never really realized um, how bad he was. And he talked about on the wedding day, he talked about how he was treating people, how he was responding, how his overreaction was. He talked about the whole uh, shirt gate. He talked about a lot of different things. And I'm telling you, he seemed really remorseful. I think he was also a very embarrassed. And he seemed like a man that was co being committed to change. So regardless of what happens with this marriage, I think um, Mitch is going to be a changed man for the better. Does he get rid of all the stuff that we don't like about Mitch? I don't think so. But I think he is um, committed to getting rid of a lot of the stuff that we really, really didn't like about him. Nate was like, you know, he was happy to deliver for Stasha. You know, Stasha always wants him to go deep. He said he felt like he could deliver that. But Nate even took up for himself and said, you know what? I'm not as closed off as Sasha tries to pretend I'm, I am. And I never thought that Nate was either. I think if you watch my video on Nate and Sasha, Sasha has a high level of anxiety. And so her bar, in order for her to feel comfortable, I think it's easy for her to say that uh, Nate was lacking or Nate was slow. But I never really thought that Nate was slow. I thought that Nate was showing her things continuously uh, that he was moving in the direction that she even wanted. You notice in this last episode, she started talking about, oh, I need it in the now, not something in the future. And I think what Stasha needed was she has a high level of anxiety and she needs the comfort now, which was part of getting those tattoos. She acted like that was a gift to us, to Nate, to get those tattoos. Uh, that was a gift to Stasha because that made her feel more comfortable. It's really her anxiety where those tattoos calmed them down. Nate didn't need that uh, tattoo. He was happy to do it, but he didn't need it. It was Stasha who needed it because she actually is the one that needs the more comfort. But in any respect, he was happy to give her a uh, go deep, show him, show her more of his past. You know, of course, he talked, opened up about his feelings for her, all that. She loved it. And Justin, on the other hand, was like, this ain't nothing for me. I do this every day in my sleep. He is very comfortable showing his emotions. And he was like, uh, this was no big stretch for me at all. Uh, but he was uh, happy that it looked like that Alexis appreciated it. Um, he went on to shade Alexis later and said, you know, she talks a good game, but she don't walk a good walk. He basically said that Alexis says a lot of things, uh, but she never really delivers on it. And if you watch my video on Alexis and um, uh, Justin, I said the same thing. I've been calling Alexis fake and hypocritical, but we're all talking about the same thing with Alexis. Even what Justin is saying is she says one thing and she does another one. It's either considered fake, she's hypocritical, or she's a liar. It's all the same category, but Alexis is really unaware of who she really is. Nate talks about his dad and how, you know, it was the first time he really ever had seen his dad uh, cry. You know, he gives his dad a lot of credit because his dad held it down. His dad was responsible, paid the bills, got everything done. But he said, you know, he missed out on a few things. It was a lot of days with top ramen and hot dogs, you know, probably because his dad wasn't cooking. There was no mother to cook. And so he probably missed out on that nurturing side. And he acknowledges that his father provided and took care of him and, to, and put a roof over his head. But some of the nurturing part of Nate that typically a woman gives a child, 
He said he was missing that. He said he missed some of that not having a mother around. He said he was the type of person where when he saw red flags for people, he just basically cut them off and ran. I didn't know Nate was like that. I didn't know he was a cut and runner where when he saw red flags, he ran, which is interesting because that's the same thing Stasha says, that she was quick to cut people off. So it's really interesting to see these two uh, hook up. I never knew that uh, Nate was the one that cut and ran really fast, but he tells us that, you know what? Uh, he was like that. You know, Mitch talks about how from the fourth grade on, he was also raised by his father. So he kind of maybe missed out on some of those things as well. You know, and that's the thing when you don't, it's kind of like, I think Dr. Pepper mentioned it, when you don't have the balance in the household. And this is the thing about whether it's divorce or single parent household, you don't get those two energies in a home. You don't get the male energy and you don't get the female energy. So here we have on this show, we have two men who were primarily raised by their fathers. And I think what they're pointing out is they didn't have that female energy in the home. And so it was difficult now when they get with a woman to sort of balance out between that and female energy and understand women. And that's what you see also. Women need to acknowledge that when they have, uh, when they're raising girls by themselves and there's no fathers in the home. So women don't typically understand that male energy because all they have in the house is the mother's energy and their energy. So it does put people at a deficit when you didn't grow up with both female and male energy in the home because it's gonna be all new to you once you do get in a relationship with someone else. And Justin gave a little bit more background information about him because we were all wondering, I was wondering how it came to be he grew up with his uh, brother who really was only about six years older than him. Like he said, he was nine, the brother was 19, he was 13. But what he said was that his mother really struggled raising him, that he was a growing boy. He was growing really fast. He needed new clothes, uh, typically like every other month. He was eating a lot of food. And basically he said his mother couldn't financially provide for him, but his brother was in a position where he could maybe provide. And his brother took over the duty. So he said he lived with his brother. He said, but also growing up with his brother, he too didn't have that nurturing side. And so his brother was like, figure it out, figure it out, figure it out. You got to grow up, figure it out. And so his mother, would, just his mother would always tell him, a let it out and cry. And um, the brother would say, a don't cry. So I think Justin talked about um, how he actually feels comfortable that he's able to show his emotions and cry more um, because his brother was the type of person that told him don't cry and to figure it out. Justin said he don't care if it makes him look like a bee. He says he does not care. He's going to be himself. Um, I do think that it is okay for Justin to be a sensitive person, but I do think that whatever relationship he is in, he does have to make sure that his emotions don't outweigh another person's emotions. But other than that, I don't, I don't have a problem with a man that cries as long as it doesn't come at the expense of someone else's feelings and they're not able to express themselves because they're always calling a, a person like a Justin or whatever. But anyway, um, you know, Mitch also talked about he got to visit the grave side of his dad with Kristen, not only his dad, but, but his aunt and I think another, or maybe his grandma or grandpa or someone like that as well. So he was happy to share these moments with Chris and him. I'm telling you, uh, Mitch is showing a lot of growth. I talk about it in my video with him. And even on this after party, you could just see uh, the growth that Mitch has gone through. And, you know, both Nate and Justin praised Mitch for saying, you know, to open up like that and to cry in front of millions of people on the camera, that that took guts. And, um, and Mitch was like, oh, I didn't think about that if I did it in front of millions of people. But it's true. You know, Justin who's very familiar in this area was saying that, you know, that takes guts. A lot of people condemn um, emotional people, uh, men who cry as being weak. But the honesty is that it actually takes guts to cry in front of millions of people. So, you know, uh, Justin was giving Mitch the kudos and so was a Nate. But Mitch was talking about how, you know, he comes off really prickly. He comes off as, um, you know, condescending. He was really taking ownership for the way he came off on the camera. I guess by the time they feel this after party, They've been able to see a couple of episodes already because um, Mitch was talking about how, he, you know, of course, he saw himself on the uh, wedding and all those types of things. So they must uh, pre-release the episodes to them so that then they can then come back and take these episodes of the after party. Nate said he loved uh, learning about Sasha, that at one time she was introverted as well. Because he talks about that he was, you know, these two are really finding out they have very similar upbringing. They both were, you know, purse hustlers. They both were introverted in the beginning. They both didn't fit in. 
They both want to be um, entrepreneurs and boss people now. So when you look at Sasha and Nate, they have a lot of things in common that bond them together. And I think that's what's making your marriage uh, one of the stronger ones this season. It started talking to Justin about the whole Alexis thing. And Justin started admitting that, you know, he does get in his head a lot. He loop loops in his head probably because his emotions overwhelm him. And he was saying he need to work on that. He said that sometimes he creates this other narrative in his head that's not really there. He didn't notice it before. He knows it now. And he wants to work on that so that in the next relationship, he'll be a little bit better. You know, he mentioned that he and Ben aren't even friends anymore, I, that the relationship got ruined. I guess it got ruined uh, during the time when Ben probably was upset with Justice, uh, Justin because he told uh, the secrets that he was talking to Morgan about with Alexis. And then Alexis went back and blabbed uh, to Morgan. And I think that... Um, uh, you know, and I think that Justin was hurt over that because he almost like he was about to cry again. Um, so I'm not quite sure if they're friends or they're definitely not the level of friends that they probably were before, it looks like. So it looks like um, he has fallen out a bit with Ben. Ben's a nice person, so I don't think Ben will probably be mad at Justin, but he probably may not talk to and he probably doesn't reach out to Justin like he used to. And I think that has kind of upset uh, Justin a little bit. But it was interesting when they started talking about it, you know, um, Nate called Alexis a snitch. He basically said that even though uh, Alexis heard that conversation between Justin and um, Morgan or Justin and Ben, uh, Alexis was a snitch. I agree, uh, Nate. Nate be calling stuff out for what it is. I agree. I think it was wrong for Justin to have um, being on speakerphone so that Alexis could hear, but I think it's equally wrong for Alexis then have to have taken that information to have betrayed her husband, to put her husband out there and hang him out to dry, all so she could give Morgan the information. So basically what she decided to do was she would rather make Ben look bad, make her husband look bad, so that she can give some information to Morgan. I don't believe it. I don't believe Alexis was looking out for Morgan. I think Alexis does what she likes to do, and that is to run her mouth. I don't think she was looking out for anyone's feelings at all. But both uh, Mitch and Nate started to say that, you know, at first they were 100% of Ben, but then they also heard um, Morgan's side of the story, and so it kind of clouded the story. But I'll tell you this. I'm pretty sure Morgan told the story in the middle because she doesn't tell stories from the beginning. Uh, but what they did say was that they found out some of the things that Ben was saying was partial truths. And like I said in my video about uh, Morgan and Ben, I they probably were partial truths because uh, Ben was straddling this fence of still needing to talk, but then also trying to honor the agreement not to say anything. So when you're trying to honor the agreement to be quiet, but you need to talk, what happens is you talk, but you don't tell the whole story. So as a result, it becomes a partial truth, which a lot of people say that's a, uh, that's a lie, and it could be a lie, or it's misleading. So I think that's where more, that's where Ben got into trouble. What he really should have told Morgan was, I can't do this for you. I need someone to talk to, and so I can't honor this agreement not to talk to anyone. Because by telling Morgan he could honor it and then talking makes him look a, like a liar. But if you look at my video between Morgan and Ben, I, I put responsibility on Morgan because her request that he not talk to anybody was a problem in and of itself. She actually created the original problem when she really thought that she could tell Ben, don't talk about us to anyone. No, you don't own my voice. You don't, you don't own a, who I can talk to to make myself feel better if, in fact, I'm struggling. That's part of mental health. And people who need to talk to people should be allowed to talk to people if it's going to help their own mental health, not just to cover and protect Morgan. But they all said, you know, Ben doesn't like conflict. So I think they still kind of believe Ben a little bit more. And what they're saying is just what Nate said to Morgan. Um, what's up with the hostility? Because I think they recognize that by nature, Ben is more of a calm person. He's a likable person. He likes to get along with people. He doesn't like controversy. And Morgan, she likes the fighting ring. Just like Mutai, uh, she uh, likes to fight. They talk about they still optimistic about Morgan and Ben. Uh, they're not optimistic. Uh, they're just saying this for TV. Everybody know that Morgan and Ben are going nowhere and going nowhere fast. Uh, but I guess they said that Ben needs to be more transparent and Morgan needs to be optimi more optimistic and forgiving. Uh, don't hold your breath because I don't think Morgan's going to be uh, any bit better. But that's it on the after party, y'all. Uh, let me know what y'all think. I'll talk to you later. Bye.